Sure, Evan, you can keep up with this too. Oh, that's easy. I just thought since I need to come yes. out. Sorry. That's okay. I'll go around behind this time. You can't Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today on the Dade County Weekly Update. My name is Carrie Anderson with Dade County. Uh, remember, you can always type your questions in the comments section during this live update. If you don't want to ask your questions during the live broadcast, you can always email us at info at dadecounty-ga.gov. Thank you so much for coming to the right place for the right information. Today, we'll be hearing from several uh, people today. We have Allison Henderson with Dade County 4-H, Evan Stone with KWIN, who has a project for uh, Commissioner Alan Bradford that he's gonna be telling you about. We'll also be hearing from Donna Street with Historic Preservation Commission, and of course, County Executive Ted Rumley with our COVID-19 update, also telling us some of the things that are happening in the county. If you know someone who would be interested in hearing from any of our guests today, go ahead and invite them to watch this live broadcast broadcast or start a watch party so you can hold your own discussions. And remember that you can also watch this later on Facebook or YouTube and sharing the links to our videos is super easy. We also try to put all of the information we discuss in the comments section. So links, uh, for example, uh, link to 4-H or link to KWIN. Uh, we try to put those in the comment section so that you can see those. I do want to thank everybody who came out to vote. Um, voting is over for East Blast and that did pass for our Dade County school system. So I think we had about 600 people come out and vote. Also want to give a big shout out and a thank you to our road crews and our uh, first responder emergency management team for uh, doing everything that they did yesterday in preparation for storms. We're thankful that those turned out, uh, turned out not to be as bad as uh, they had been thought to be. So we're very thankful for that and for a beautiful day today. So without further ado, we will start uh, with Allison Henderson. Hi, I'm Allison Henderson, the Dade County 4-H educator and we are happy to announce that we are going to be having a Dade County 4-H Cloverleaf Project Achievement. Um, we were not able as a Northwest District to have our DPA event in Rome, Georgia this year. So each county is having their own. So we will be having Project Achievement for fourth through sixth graders. If you look on our Dade County 4-H Facebook page, you'll see these same slides scrolling through. Um, basically, to do a project achievement project, you will choose a topic that you like, um, research it a little bit, pick two or three or four main ideas that you wanna put together, um, put them in the form of a presentation. You may use posters, you may use props, you may use a PowerPoint if you wish. Then take all of that and get someone to make a video of you. We're going to do this as video uploads. Take a video of yourself doing your presentation and then call our 4-H office at 706-657-4116 and we will give you a secure link to upload your video to. And then um, that will be the upload window is from April 1st to April 14th. And then on April 22nd, we will have an evening of awards and fun. So if you want more details on this, you can look on our Dade County 4-H Facebook page. Here's some of the details here. You can call our office again at 706-657-4116. And this is for fourth, fifth, and sixth graders. All right. The uh, other thing I need to tell you about is at the Ag Center, they are having a home vegetable garden workshop next Tuesday. The speaker will actually be in Gordon County, but they will be Zooming it live to the Ag Center. So you may call the Ag Center to register. You can either tell them that you're coming in person to the Ag Center to watch it on our big screen, or if you prefer to watch it at home, then you can give them your email address and they will send you a link to this Zoom session. They will be talking about home vegetable gardens 
and Bob Westerfield is the speaker, and I've heard him before. He is awesome. So next Tuesday from 10 to 12, just call our office, 706-657-4116. Afternoon, everyone. Uh, got something that uh, the community can get involved with, we, we, and we hope that you will. Um, as, as we know, uh, Commissioner Alan Bradford uh, has been in the hospital now for uh, several weeks battling uh, COVID and the complications there uh, with, the, uh, with COVID. So what can we do? Uh, a lot of people, uh, of course, uh, Carrie's been keeping us up to date with the family's uh, uh, Facebook updates every day. And, uh, uh, and a lot of people keep asking, you know, how's Alan and that type of thing. But uh, what we've come up with is the fact that, uh, and they started this today. This is uh, some uh, thank you poster board, I guess, or not, uh, excuse me, uh, best wishes, get well soon, uh, uh, that type of thing that uh, folks have been writing uh, for Alan. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to have at the library for the public to be able to come by and you can write uh, best wishes to uh, Speedy Recovery, whatever you want to, and sign this card that'll be all, all together. These, these are poster boards, and there are gonna be lots of them around the area. The school's getting involved. Uh, they're gonna have that uh, for the uh, teachers and also the uh, students at all four of the schools. Uh, Josh Engel talked with him earlier today, and they are, uh, uh, they are doing this, all of the, uh, County employees, the sheriff's department, the uh, court system, all of the uh, county government. And this is one that's being done here at the uh, at the uh, at the uh, administrative office. But if you would like to do that, and we'd love you to to go by the Dade County Library anytime they're open between now and next Tuesday, just make it a point to drop by. Uh, Marciana has the uh, board; they've got something for you to write on, and just to. Uh, just write a little note. I mean, that's just basically it. Write a little note. If you don't have say, hey, get well soon, whatever, this is going to be uh, given to the family uh, and uh, let them know that we're thinking of Alan and we want him to, uh, to have a speedy recovery and continue to uh, do well that he has, uh, from what I understand, over the last two or three or, uh, days. And we want him to continue to improve and that the county's thinking of him. So if you... Uh, would like to do that, drop by the Dade County Library between now and Tuesday and just sign these poster boards. We're going to make sure the family knows. Hopefully we're going to be able to take them to the hospital, even though family, uh, not a lot of them can get in, of course, and uh, uh, we, we certainly can't, but they can get these poster boards with all of our signatures on the inside there and hopefully get that in the intensive care uh, room with him and also the uh, rooms that they'll, uh, hopefully he'll get to move in when he continues to improve. So go by the Dade County Library. Uh, you may see them in other places. Uh, if you happen to see, uh, you know, if you come to one of the county uh, buildings, uh, Sheriff's Department or whatever, they may ask you to sign it. But uh, we ask the Dade County Library has been gracious enough uh, with Carrie's help to make sure that uh, you can go and sign these. So there you go. This is what it looks like. They've got pens for you to be able to do that and just put best wishes to Alan and a speedy recovery for our uh, for our uh, commissioner. Thank you. Before we hear from Donna Street and County Executive Ted Rumley, I did need to give you an update on um, the COVID vaccines. So Governor Kemp has opened the vaccines to people ages 55 and older in the state of Georgia, and also adults with chronic health issues. And those chronic health issues cover a host of issues. If you want to make an appointment, the easiest and most efficient way to do that is by calling us here in our local Department of Health at 706-657-4213. Um, uh, Wendy and Tori and Randy, Taryn and Deb are all ready to take your calls and your appointments. So um, please call to make your appointment for the COVID vaccine. Uh, they are also doing second doses. And so just as a reminder, if you got your first dose here in Dade County, 
your name will pop up on a list. They will call you to schedule your second dose. You don't need to call back in. They will call you. You do have between 28 and 42 days to get that. A lot of people are saying, well, you know, I, I can only go three weeks. Well, you have, um, you have to go a minimum of 28 days before you get that second dose, and you can go up to 42 and sometimes even a little after. So also as a reminder, uh, the Department of Health is no longer doing COVID testing, but there are some places locally that are doing COVID testing. You can find all of those testing facilities on our website at dadecounty-ga.gov under the COVID link. The COVID link is now right next to the severe weather link uh, where you can sign up for HyperReach. If you haven't done that, that is available there. Um, but COVID testing, the three that are here in Dade County are Lawson Medical Center. Their telephone number is 706-657-3200. Price Pharmacy, 706-657-4061. And Primary Health Care, and they can be reached at 706-657-7575. We'll put all of those um, telephone numbers in the comments for you, but they are also online at dadecounty-ga.gov. All right, now we'll hear from Donna Street and Ted Rumley. Good afternoon. I have with me today Donna Street, which is, she Good is afternoon. a historical society. And uh, she's going to give you a little update on the courthouse. Uh, the contractors have been working over there the last uh, month or so, and they have uh, they finished up. We did a walkthrough uh, this past week. Uh, to uh, do a little punch list, and it, it looks good. They've done a good job. But Donna, you mean yeah. you did a climb through? Yeah, that's, that's pretty much what um, it is. Yeah. The Historical Preservation Commission is a part of the government of Dade County and has been now, it's been six years, five years, 2016 to now. Um, we got a grant last year to improve the uh, superstructure of the, of the courthouse, and that grant uh, was completed when Ted and them did their walkthrough. But what, what it was basically is the structure that was holding up the roof had been impaired because of rain over the years. It, it, it was so impaired that it turned red. Mm -hmm. And it's been replaced by a local company. And I think Ted took some pictures, so we're going to be showing those at a com commission meeting. Hopefully, in the maybe the next, if not this one, the next one. Yeah, we'll, we'll have a let y'all do a PowerPoint kind of thing, and we can show it to you. And that is good, and our, our HPC is going to meet next Wednesday in, in a call meeting to get back on track after all of us have had COVID shots. Um, the, um, I had a little project going a couple of weeks ago where I was trying to find the oldest person in Dade County. And I'd like to have the oldest person from each community. So if you, uh, if you have somebody that I don't have, and I have, these are the four people that I have, Clyde Castleberry, 99, Hobart, uh, oh my, I now forget his name. Cooper. Hubert Cooper. Hubert Cooper, not Hubert, Hubert. Uh, Dee Dee Bain, they're all 99. And Miss Atherton from, from Wildwood is 100. Now we have a few people that are living with their children out of Dade County, maybe because they're in a nursing home or a care facility that I would like to know too. But uh, our older, older people, my mother's 91. She may be the, one of the oldest people in Wildwood after Miss Atherton. So. Uh, please let, just just email me or my phone number is still in the dang phone book so six five seven seven three zero five. Um, the other thing that I've been looking at today for just a few minutes was somebody said we didn't have tornadoes around here until 2011. Well, that's not true. Diane and Ted know that they had a tornado visit them twice. Ninety-two, yeah. But I found three incidences in about 15 minutes in 1949, 1953, and another one where. 61, where we had a little drop off by just like we always do. The tornadoes are coming to Alabama and they come over here to us. In the 53 one, or I can't remember which one, but one of them, it took the top off of the field house at Davis. It, it destroyed some homes. Floods seem to be a bigger deal, always have been, than, than, they, than, the, uh, than the tornadoes. But that wind is pretty serious. And uh, I'm, I might do a little more research on that, but I'm also g still going to be researching something on Burkhalter Gap. So if you know Burkhalter Gap Road and uh, working on some interesting things about that. Here's a fun fact. More people voted in 1929 for a $95,000 bond issue 
to build roads in Dade County than voted for this East Blast. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's just interesting to me that, of course, everybody voted in the November stuff, so in the January stuff, so that's good. That's all from me. Okay. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it, Don. Um, I've got a few things to go over here with uh, before I do the uh, our COVID uh, numbers. Um, County Road Six, uh, we're going wide open on it, looking really good. Uh, I'll give you a, more of an exact date. Maybe we're going to be ha able to open it next week. We'll know more about it. Uh, we did get you know kind of um, messed up yesterday, a little bit with the weather, the rain, but they're back uh, back on it. Uh, and speaking of that too, we had uh, been pretty. Uh, touch and go night last night we did uh, we did kind of dodge the bullet a little bit we had a lot of rain but thank goodness we didn't have any tornadic uh, issues here we had some wind a few trees down uh, but um, the water as you can see with the creek and all it's, it's starting to recede some look out still up and we still have a few roads of water over but uh, the worst is over it's supposed to be a beautiful weekend I don't think there's any rain in sight till next weekend from what I understood a while ago from the from the weather so that's a good thing um, but anyway, County Road 6 is looking good. We, we're really rolling that now. Uh, and so, I can, like I said, I'll give you next week, I can start pinpointing when we're going to be able to try to open that up. Um, Alan Bradford, uh, the, uh, is Evan, has he talked yet? Okay, he's one. I, I was had to step out and answer the phone. But uh, please try to sign uh, some of the billboards or the signs that uh, that they're going to have around. And, and, uh, and, and like Evan said, we're going to put them up there in his room. And, and uh, Alan, uh, as far as a report on him, he's still... You know, kind of holding his own. Uh, thank goodness he's not gotten any worse, but he's still got a long road to go. And just keep your prayers coming in for him uh, and his family. Um, tractor supply, uh, April the third. Uh, that's on a Saturday. That's going to be a, a the grand opening of a, a ribbon cutting or tractor supply. We're planning a, a really a, a good day, a big day over there. Uh, we're going to have different things. We'll announce it later on this week of things that we're going to uh, be doing over there. Um, I've got confirmation that we're going to have a little bluegrass band over there playing. Uh, just going to make it a good event, a good day uh, event or half a day event, uh, and and welcome these people, you know, and the people coming in, you know, too. But uh, we we do uh, we do look forward to that day and uh, have been for a while, and it's really a nice facility. I mean, it's just a it's just just a, an asset to the county and the city, and uh, we just um, look forward to that Saturday. Um, Dollar General on the mountain, from what I understand. Uh, they should be opening next week. Uh, they, I couldn't get. They didn't call me back today, uh, so I will. Uh, I will let you know, and I'll let. Uh, I'll find out, and Kerry can post it on online there for sure. What day? I know they've been stocking all week, getting their you know shelves and all stock, but um, I couldn't. I can't really officially tell you that, but uh, as far as the date, but I will find out today or tomorrow, and she can post it and and try to you know when they do open up, try to welcome them. Also, uh, they uh, they uh, that's a well needed. Uh, 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 building out there as far as a, a business in that area because as you know if you live out there uh, you have got to drive a long way to get anything as far as groceries go um, the uh, grant program we, we mention that every week and uh, I've been to a regional commission meeting today and that was a big topic down there because um, they've got a tremendous amount of money there to help people that's been impaired by the COVID-19 uh, that's been you know out of uh, out of work or whatever and uh, they just can't get people I just can't hardly find anyone in any of the counties 15 counties now all the way from Harrelson all the way up to Dade and all that uh, actually um, that really want to do that or want to work or even uh, they they don't qualify now we've got uh, we've got a few here in the county that we've uh, we've helped and, and put to work and actually uh, it's worked out really good for them so far and so but if you know anyone that's been out uh, that's been put out by this COVID-19 uh, you know out of work or whatever uh, please have them come by or call call Paula Stallings. Uh, you can get a hold of her at 657-4625. That's online there. Uh, so you know, try to try to do that because if we if the region does not use this money, uh, I think we've got now maybe a year less than a year left to, to use it, and uh, we got 40 some whatever, whatever slots to fill. Uh, then that money will go back. You know, it'll be turned back over to the to government. So the county, the federal government anyway. So um, anyway. Paula Stallings at 657-4625 here at our office. Tire Amnesty Day has been set, um, as we mentioned last week. Uh, it's going to be the first Saturday in May. That's May the 1st, and it'll be from 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock. Um, that's uh, and then, you know, if it rains us out or whatever, the makeup day is going to be May the 8th. 
and uh, there's no commercial tires or large tractor or truck tires uh, this time at all. Um, they, uh, they actually will take up to 20 tires per resident. Um, Dade County residents only, we're not going to take anything out of state uh, this year at all. Uh, they need to be standard uh, car, truck, or motorcycle tires. Um, and the tires they're asking them to be as clean as possible. Uh, no mud, you know, rocks or, or whatever. And, for, and really, they, I know it's hard to do this, especially if you've got tires out, but uh, no water. You know, try to get the water out of them before you bring them down here. Uh, and so just, uh, that's, the makeup day is going to be May the 8th, like I said, but, be, but mark that down on your calendar. May the 1st is the uh, tire embassy day, uh, and it'll be from 9 to 3. Um, our COVID, you know, they've stopped the COVID testing here, uh, and well, in all counties, all of our uh, northwest counties, and they are doing the vaccinations. There's uh, appointments, you know, Security's got all that online as far as the numbers you need to call. Uh, they have, uh, they are doing, you know, 55 and up now, and we feel, found out today, probably uh, first week in April or first of April, uh, the, the gates are going to be open. He's going to open, the governor will, and it's going to actually, uh, I, I guess the age, age group will be from what? Carrie, 16 up? You just said all adults, 18 and older. 18 and over. Oh, that's the goal. That's right. the goal, yeah, 18 and up. So, uh, and when that happens, of course, it'll be even busier, but they're, uh, they've they got a pretty good, um, you know, pretty constant down there right now. Uh, but they're handling it. And our call people, our call team we've got down there doing a good job uh, on the appointments. So, uh, and we're still are we still giving the, um, are we doing any Johnson Johnson? Or what's we, are doing, we are doing so now we only are, or? we are doing johnson and johnson like once a week but usually okay. it's moderna okay but moderna still is a, is a, yeah and and they do have johnson and johnson and and i, I think that you, you told me too they do have some of the other uh, what's what's that the other vaccine pfizer pfizer no we you do don't? not have any pfizer at, okay. at the moment i know walker and katusa do they've got a backlog and that was another thing we discussed down there uh, I've got a conference call in the morning uh, uh, with uh, the two commissioners over there, Katusa and, and uh, with uh, Shannon Whitfield, and uh, they have got, I think he told me, 30-something, 30, 30 3,400 doses of it. Uh, they bought a freezer, uh, you know, because it's got to be kept, you know, really, really uh, frozen, uh, minus whatever. But uh, they're, they're going to try to have, uh, in the next few weeks, um, a drive through over there. They're working with the health department. Uh, but it will be it will be only that drug that how you it pronounce will, it? Pfizer 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 okay. so it will and, be just Pfizer and yeah. they did call us to talk talk to you about yeah. that and talk to us about that um, yeah. and so but we are still giving Moderna that's here. right yeah and what that what that means is I mean especially once April comes and and it does uh, you know a, a lot there'll be a lot more people involved um, over there that'd be your choice you know and you can uh, make an appointment it'll be uh, over there probably to call an aid is what they're talking about what it looks like and it'll be strictly a drive-through is what they're and we'll, i'll know more about it tomorrow we're going to do a little conference call and see uh, exactly what they've got in mind uh, and so that that's just mainly just to help to get the head count down to get them get people get it but the thing about it is if you get that shot and get that uh, uh or like moderna if you get moderna the second shot's got to be moderna so whatever you get you've got to go back well johnson johnson's just one day right Yes, it's just, Johnson it's just and one Johnson shot. is one and done. You're one and done. One and done. Uh, yeah. But but it's not as effective yeah, as about the double doses in it on, on that. Yeah. Right. So yeah. it's not as effective as the double doses yeah. that you yeah. get with Pfizer and Moderna. Yeah. And what I would do, you know, if you you know, if it's kind of uh, if you just hadn't really thought about it, do a little research. You know, Google's real easy. Google it, and you need to make your mind up before you go in there and actually pull your sleeve up and know what you're getting. You know, and uh, and they're they're a little different each one of them. You know, and so. Uh, you know that's that's your call. The nurses are not going to just force you to take either one of them. That's that's up to you. And so you need to do that. Uh, you know before you come into any health department or make a, to make your appointment. That, that's one question I would ask them. Is okay. What you know, what are you giving me? So anyway, um, let me see here. I don't think I've forgotten anything. One thing that we do need to mention, and we just got it from Patty. Uh, I'm sorry, Paula Duval, who's our property assessor. Is she wants to remind people to uh, file for their property tax exemption if they're eligible to homestead exemption home, it, really, by yeah. April 1st. That's right. Yeah, that's because I've had people come in on the 15th of April or, or May or June and, and they get real upset because they missed that date. And there's nothing that they can do about it. They can't reverse it. Now, Paula or the board, you know, I mean, it's you've got that's a drop dead date, you know, so you got to do that. And uh, so uh, what that amounts to, I mean, you, you, you can call Paula and We've got her number in here, the, the, the assessor's office, and uh, 
because you could really save quite a bit on filing a homestead exemption if you live in the county. And um, so, and also while you're talking to her, I don't know what, you know, what whatever your age is, if you're 65 and over, talk to her about other exemptions that you may have on your property taxes that people don't even know. You know, I had a guy come in a couple of weeks ago and he, you know, he was already 77 years old, lived here all his life, and he didn't really realize that he could have the um, the school exemption, you know, on his home and five acres and all. And that's big. That's a big exemption. So, um, you know, when you do call Paul or anyone in the office, be sure to, to ask them uh, to explain the different exemptions that you might qualify for, regardless of what age you are. Um, I'll go ahead and move into our, uh, our COVID numbers. Uh, Dade County uh, today, we are at 1,149 uh, since March, since this began. Uh, we're uh, up 34 cases of positive cases in the last two weeks. We've had 10 deaths and we've had 56 hospitalizations. That's from a year ago or from last March. Um, Walker County, uh, they were they were at 600, 6,021 last week. Now they're at 6,061. Uh, but they've had 111 positives in the last uh, two weeks. Now they're a large county, quite a large, quite, quite a bit larger than this. But Catoosa County, uh, they, they stand at 5,252 today. Um, they were up 83 in the last uh, 14 days, the last two weeks, and um, so that's that's a pretty good jump for them. Chattooga County, uh, they're at 2,134, and uh, they've also gained uh, 32 positives in the last two weeks. Uh, Whitfield County, they're at 14,355 today, uh, and they've actually uh, increased 144 in the last 14 days. Gordon County, they're at 6,252, and uh, they're up 133 positives in the last two weeks. Floyd County, uh, they are at 9,585 people. Uh, this is from the beginning. Uh, they are up 203 uh, positives in the last two weeks. We still have uh, 2,598 uh, uh, cases that have not been matched, two counties, positive cases, um, and that's, that varies every week uh, when we read this. Um, so far in Georgia, though, uh, total deaths in the state of Georgia, we've had 15,997 almost 16,000 people that's died uh, from COVID since uh, uh, the Mar March of last year. Uh, and we've had 57,635 hospitalizations. Uh, Tennessee, let's move down to Hamilton County. Today they have 41,470 positive cases in uh, Tennessee that's been reported since day one, but they've had 40,983 recoveries. So you can de deduct that from that number and uh, today they have 749 active cases as we speak. Uh, the, uh, I'm sorry, they've had 40,256 recoveries uh, out of that 41,470. Uh, they've also had 465 uh, deaths in Hamilton County. Marion County, they're at 3,012 in Marion County. Um, they, at, at, as we speak, they have got 43 active cases and they've had 2,924 recoveries with 45 deaths. Grundy County, now they're at 1,718. Uh, they've had four, they have 14 active cases today as we speak, and they've had 1,674 recoveries with 30 deaths. Sequatchie so County, they're at 1,605. Uh, they've had, they have 29 active cases. Uh, they actually have had 1,549 recoveries with 27 deaths. Meads County, uh, they're at 1,284. They have 13 active cases uh, today as we speak. They've had 1,248 recoveries and 23 deaths. Bradley County, uh, they're at 13,557 uh, today. They've had uh, 427 uh, active cases reported uh, as we speak today. And uh, they've had 142 deaths uh, up till this point. Move down to Alabama, uh, Jackson County. Uh, they Last week at this time, they were at 6,558. Today, they're at 6,687. They've had 105 deaths in Jackson County. Uh, they've had uh, reported of 149 cases in the last 14 days positive in Jackson. DeKalb County, uh, today they're at 8,660 uh, positive cases. That's been reported since uh, the March uh, beginning. Uh, they've had 178 deaths, 
And uh, so far in the last 14 days, they have had 171 cases, positive cases reported in 14 days. So, um, you know, things are, are still going, you know, the numbers are still out there, they're still going up. Uh, they're not nothing like we've been looking at. So uh, hopefully, you know, we've had enough people now that are, have got their vaccines. And of course, in the next uh, two to three weeks, uh, we'll, they're gonna change the age group even more. So hopefully in the next few weeks, our numbers are really starting, you know, changing and dropping. Uh, you need to still try to, you know, wear your mask, uh, use common sense, you know, when you're out uh, in, in groups at Walmart or wherever, you know, uh, Food City. Uh, please, you know, try to keep your six foot distance if you, distance if you can. Um, we'll, we'll try to keep you updated on any changes uh, that might happen, uh, good or bad. And uh, Carrie's good about that, about keeping her uh, updated on that. So if you've got any questions that you need to talk to me about, my number six uh, six five seven four six two five is their office number, or six six seven eight nine nine nine, air code four two three. That's my cell number. So uh, feel free to call at any time, and I'll, I'll uh, try to answer your questions. And if I don't have the answer, I'll, I'll get you an answer. All the other uh, commissioners are the same. Uh, I don't I don't have their numbers memorized. Carrie's got them in her uh, in her laptop. And um, they, they're just like me. They're there. They're public servants, and they're, we're here to serve you. They'll answer their phone. If they don't, they'll call you right back. And uh, so just please, please call us if we can be of any, any help to you at all. We got any questions? No questions. Okay. Well, we appreciate everyone working with us uh, through this and also with, uh, you know, working with our health department because I know it's been kind of, um, you know, kind of chaotic down there, but I'm afraid it's going to get even more so. Uh, when this, when we got the more the age group that they're fixing to open up, uh, you know, maybe the first of April. So just call us if you have any questions, and we'll try to help you. Yeah.